It was the night of Halloween. Rag and Tootsie were out trick-or-treating in the mysterious village of Castle Creek. They had passed McGregor's house, who had dressed up for the occasion. Next, they had knocked upon Miss Sally's door, who despised Halloween. Trick or treat! You won't find any sweets here, kids. Run along. Rake, I guess it's going to be trick. The two kids cheekily threw water at Miss Sally and ran away. They arrived at the village centre to find loads of villagers who had dressed up in the most peculiar costumes. Cakes and decorations had been laid out, and the two troublemakers could not resist taking a large bite. Uncle Steve had not been seen for a while, so the two children decided to knock on his door. He seemed a bit... put off. Uh, I think we should come back later. At last, they arrived at Maggie's house, a truthfully charming old lady. Trick or treat! Good evening, kids! Oh, Rake, you sure look scary. Tootsie helped me with the special effects makeup. Oh, did you now? <laughs> I had lots of fun with the fake blood, that's for sure. Oh, excuse me a minute. I need to get you some sweets. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Maggie. It was getting late, and a full moon rose up in the sky. Uh, Tootsie, I think I'm going to go home now. I'm getting a bit tired. I think I might go to that house over there. The decorations are so spooky. I love it. Don't be back late, Toots. I won't. I promise. Tootsie watched Rake walk off in the distance, not knowing what she was getting herself into. She fearlessly shuffled over to the house that seemed as ghostly as ever. The window panes were shattered, the roof wonky and a sinister aura was emanating from its core. She stumbled up the steps and knocked on the door. It slowly creaked open. A revolting creature stood in the entrance with an overall growl and a distinctive wart on the end of its nose. The repulsive creature that stood in front of her was a witch. But it was the night of Halloween, and Tootsie simply thought that it was a disguise. She had let her guard down. Trick or treat! Oh, fair child, I expect you're looking for some sweets. Oh, what a pity, I left them in my basement. Follow me in, if you please. I have to be home soon. Oh, don't worry, child. It won't be for long. As soon as Tootsie's feet touched the floor, she realized it was all a trap. Uh, I'm going to go now. Oh no, you will not. The poor girl was locked up into a filthy cell. There is one last thing I'm going to do before I let you out, girl. She flung a gruesome potion upon the girl and transformed her into a witch. Now, now, dear child, I've set a curse upon you. You will live as a witch for 100 days. You have two crucial goals. Number one, you have to make all the different potions of the game. Number two, you have to tame every single cat. If you do not succeed by the 100th day, you will stay a witch for always and eternity. Now you will see what it's truly like to be me. To be hated, to be angry all the time. Tootsie walked off, feeling completely changed. If you enjoy stories like these, you can check out The Story of the Stronghold, where a zombie and a creeper escape from the dark secret of this place. By the way, I was thinking of dressing up as zombified Tootsie for Halloween and I will be posting the picture on my Instagram, so if you would like to check it out, the link of my Instagram is in the description. As first seen in this story, Tootsie has been cursed. To free herself from her witch form, she has to brew every single potion in the game, and she has to collect every single cat breed. 
Of course, this means all the potions that require a specific ingredient and therefore not the extra potions you can make by adding redstone or glowstone dust. The fall season will be arriving in the last 10 days. As we all know, Halloween is coming up very soon and on the night of day 99, there will be a Minecraft Halloween where friendly creatures become monsters and monsters dress up as friends. Will Titsy succeed or will she be trapped forever in the skin of a monster? I woke up in a dark spruce hut with my first cat. I glared at the filth of the swamp around me. But being a witch wasn't that bad because I had unlimited potions, but I needed practice throwing them. Here it comes, anger filled me up at the sight of these villagers, so I destroyed all of their crops and trampled on them. Of course, I stole all of their food and then I decided to burn down some of their houses because, I mean, why could they live peacefully in the plains and I had to live in that dirty swamp? That was a peaceful night. On day two, I decided to brighten up my day by burning a villager. I relaxed at the sight of chaos, but it was not enough and I had to kill loads of innocent animals. I returned to the swamp and met this little old witch who loved to torment villagers, just like I did. In the afternoon, I returned to my hut and was able to tame my first cat. And I named him Lucky, of course. I had found this random map at a portal chest and I decided to put it on the wall, I am not sure why. On day three, I started making a farm and then I was really bored, so I decided to go attack another golem at the next door village. To end the day on a good note, I decided to kill off some more cows. Day four was mining day, so I set off into a mine and I arrived at a lava lake. After fighting off a skeleton, I found some diamonds, my very, very first in this world. The witch's luck was with me because only a few moments later, I found some lapis lazuli. So I pressed F3 and I found some diamonds using the lapis lazuli technique. On day five, I met this charming spider and then I went home to make a diamond pickaxe. You see, to break the curse, I had to make every single potion in the game, which meant that I really needed to get some blaze rods. I started collecting essential ingredients for my potions, such as mushrooms and glowstone dust. Protected by the wart fungus, no hoglin nope. dared to attack me. I wanted to build myself a witch's castle with loads of towers and I really wanted the roofs to be made out of crimson wood because they would have that nice pink kind of magical color. An important ingredient I needed to make one of my potions was glistening melon and I know that you can sometimes find it in portal chests so even though there was a hoglin Guarding the portal, I still went along to check the chest and there was nothing, of course. Well, I did find something though, the nether fortress. I have never been in the nether so early before and guess what? All I had on my back was gold armor and I think iron leggings. So yeah, I, I really had to be careful. But the reason I wasn't as scared as usual was that I had three more hearts being a witch. I was delighted to find that the blaze spawner was inside and that the blazes couldn't fly around everywhere so they weren't too tricky to kill off. Although I must say that when they did hit me, I really felt it because, I don't know, usually when I'm in the nether I very often have diamond armor and honestly gold armor and iron armor are not at all the same. <laughs> Once I had everything I needed, I made the long way back through the crimson forest and into the portal. I shuffled on the lily pads that led to my hut and then I decided to do a bit of redecorating. I suddenly remembered that I had to tame every single cat breed, so I set off to the village and found this white and grey cat. 
For some reason, I also bought this horseback and I made him a very, very comfortable enclosure in the water. I'm sure he loved that. With the carrots I had collected at the village, on day 12, I made the potion of night vision and I also bred both of my cats. I had named the white and grey cat Albus and the baby was named Hagrid. The names are of course very unique and not at all inspired by Harry Potter, not at all. By the way, Cheeky Hagrid had followed me on my quest to find more potion ingredients. He was a very good cat because he actually bought me some phantom membrane in the morning but I thought it would be more challenging if I got the phantom membrane on my own so I threw it away. It might be a bit silly but yeah. And as you've just seen, Hagrid actually grew up in only one boat trip. I had found this dark oak forest and I wasn't sure what I would make my witch's castle out of so I decided to take some dark oak and some spruce wood just in case. On day 16 I had found a shipwreck so I looted the chests. I clearly was not a very good witch because I kept throwing potions on me by accident because basically the letters E and R are right next to each other on the keyboard. Using the chunk 9 and 9 technique that Rake had taught me I found the treasure in no time. I found this coral reef, took some sea pickles, almost drowned and headed back to my boat. I arrived at a desert and found a pillager outpost in the distance and you know how witches are, we hate everything. So of course I went to kill off the pillagers, I burnt their outpost down and that was it and I felt really so much better after it. The reason I burn everything down is that my ancestors were actually all burnt on bonfires so that is a good way to avenge them. By the end of the day I found this desert temple and it had an efficiency 5 book. On day 18 I set out into the savannah to find a village because savannah villages often have melons. Then suddenly I was overcome by anger. I could not fit through the door because of my hat. You know what this means. The villagers had insulted me and so I destroyed the house. All this disrespect had outraged me and so I decided to explode another villager and somehow he survived, which put me in a fury. Nevertheless, the next day I set out to find some cats. I was delighted to find a Persian cat and a tabby cat. And so began the chase. I named these two Polly and Susan, but I was still filled with anger and this baby villager didn't stand a chance. And I think we can welcome baby Max to the family. In need of some chaos, I decided to annoy the Iron Golem. I just thought it was hilarious seeing that Iron Golem's face, he was so mad at me. <laughs> Revenge time. The villager did not have time to get into his bed this time and trust me, he exploded along with the house. On day 20, I of course decided to burn down the whole village and by the way, quick fact, Discord was almost called Bonfire because it was meant to be nice and cosy. Although when I left, the village was not very cosy. And then I suddenly realized that I had to bring Max, Hagrid, Polly and Susan back. And so began the four trips. Yes, I had to cross the entire ocean with one cat at the time. So yeah, it took quite a while. But what wouldn't a witch do for her cats? I decided to kill off some cows to get loads of leather <gasps> because I didn't want any cows at my house. I did not want to farm them because I do not care about anything except cats and potions. My horse died for some reason and then one of my cats drowned. It was a catastrophe. The cat was Polly, Max's Persian mother. To drown my sorrows, I decided to go mining for diamonds using the clay technique. But it wasn't enough. I had to do something big, something that would put my mind off the death of my poor cat. It was time to build my witch's castle. 
So of course I marked the areas where there could be diamonds uh, because that is very important to me, but I made a huge dirt platform. This would be the base of my castle and it was of course situated in the middle of the swamp. The next few days, I decided to go back into the nether for three reasons. So number one, I wanted to start getting some ender pearls for the ender dragon. I also got some magma cream for my potions. And lastly, I got some black stone that I would be using a bit on my castle towers. Time for some Halloween facts. Halloween's origins date back to the ancient Celtic festival of Son. The Celts actually lived in Ireland, in the United Kingdom, and also in Northern France. On the night of October the 31st, it was believed that the ghosts of the dead returned to Earth. People would light bonfires and wear costumes to ward off these ghosts. Nowadays, the whole point of Halloween is to overcome fear. Children actually get a chance to be the scary one for a change. And it is also an excellent opportunity for parents to teach their children about the frightening world they live in and how to navigate it. Once the base of my castle was done, I decided to start enchanting and I also brewed the potion of fire resistance. While I was at it, I also made the potion of poison and the potion of weakness. It was high time to find myself some more diamonds to be able to cover myself with diamonds. And by that, of course, I mean to get a full diamond armor. And I could not believe the luck I got. I got like, I think eight diamonds, two veins of diamonds right next to each other, like separated by two blocks. It was incredible. I find that strip mining can get quite boring, but as soon as you find diamonds, you feel like it's, you know, all worth it. <laughs> when I got back to my enchanting table, I realized that I could actually get fortune three on my pickaxe. So I went back down mining to find some redstone and then I was able to enchant it. I wanted to make myself a bow. So that night I went out hunting monsters. With my fortune pickaxe in hand, the diamonds could not resist me and I got my entire diamond armor. But the fun wasn't over and I felt as though it was Halloween early because I got so many treats. And I expect it's Christmas too because I landed upon this skeleton spawner. Time to hop off to Mexico now and talk about El Dia de los Muertos. And I don't know if I said that really well. So while Halloween is celebrated on October the 31st, Dia de los Muertos is actually celebrated right after on the 2nd of November. It originates from Mexico and Central America, where the indigenous groups, including Aztec, Maya and Toltec, had specific times when they commemorated their loved ones who had passed away. It is actually a celebration of life, not death, because it is believed that death was part of the journey of life. Rather than death ending life, they believe that the new life came from death. The ofrenda is often the most recognized symbol of Dia de los Muertos. People place down pictures of the deceased along with items that belong to them and objects that serve as a reminder of their lives. With thoughts of sugar skulls in my mind, I brewed the potion of strength, swiftness, slowness, and harming. To keep track of which potions I'd made and which I hadn't, I decided to make a wall dedicated to the potion. So I would place the potion in an item frame and then I would put a sign under explaining what the potion was. I finished off the day with the potion of invisibility and then I did a bit of fishing. I was still missing four ingredients. So a gas tear, a rabbit's foot, a phantom membrane and a turtle's shell. On day 51, I removed all the excess dirt from around the castle and I actually realized that mobs were not hostile against me because I was a witch. I don't know why I thought that maybe they were, but it was because I had attacked them first. I actually thought that as I was still a player that they would be hostile. As I had the bad omen effect, I of course went to the next door village 
and I had a very nice time watching villagers get killed. It was time for me to collect the remaining ingredients, so I decided I would head over to the desert to get a rabbit's foot. Not gonna lie, that moment really freaked me out, but yeah, I had mining fatigue and couldn't even mine my bed, which was very annoying, but gradually it wore off. I went to get my bed and I also got a dandelion because running after rabbits is not very fun, so I'd much rather simply luring them in. Being as evil as can be, I of course killed all the baby rabbits, even though they don't drop anything, just for the fun of it, you know? Finally, I had it, the rabbit's foot, which meant I only had three ingredients left. I found a beach with some turtles on it, so I fed them some seagrass and I looked as though I had green fingers, which is quite funny. <laughs> and then the mummy turtle took ages to lay her eggs. <laughs> but finally they were there, so I made a protective barrier so that no zombies could step onto the eggs. And so I spent the next 11 days guarding the eggs like a mummy. Uh, I actually had found another couple of turtles on another beach, hoping that it would take less time because I needed seven scoots to make one turtle shell. So yeah, it was going to take time. And the turtles actually have to hatch and grow up for you to get the scoots. So yeah, this was very, very long, but thankfully, this phantom had spawned, which meant that I was once again another ingredient down. As this was all very boring, I actually spent my evenings with the monsters because, you know, we were friends, they weren't hostile. So yeah, I guess it was fun in a way. By the way, I'd like to know in the comments who actually already made this potion, the potion of the Turtle Master, because it is so time consuming to actually just get the turtle shell, you know, but I mean, finally, um, the turtles grew up and I was able to make my way home. I hopped back onto my horse with no name and this reminds me of the song from America <laughs> and I got lost, but thankfully the next day on day 68, I finally made my way home. Why did I get lost? So basically, I thought I knew the way perfectly, but I didn't, so yeah. Better to use the coordinates next time. On day 69, it was time to brew again. So, potion of leaping, tick. Potion of the turtle master, tick. Potion of slow falling, tick. Now, all I needed to find was a gas tier. But first, it was decorating time. By the way guys, I really want to know, what are you going to dress up as for Halloween? So personally, I said in the intro, I would be dressing up as Zombie Tootsie. So maybe you think the idea is a bit weird, but basically I realized that you've never actually seen me dress up as my actual Minecraft skin. So I was thinking, why not be a zombie um, dressed in Tootsie's skin? And by the way, you could also tell me maybe if you don't celebrate Halloween or if you celebrate Halloween in a different way, like for example in Mexico. Although I think that Mexicans actually celebrate both Halloween and Dia de los Muertos. A grand witch's castle must have a grand path leading up to it. And as I was in the middle of a swamp, I thought, why not use some lily pads? So I made a huge path of lily pads. I still had my entire armor to enchant. So I decided to go back to the skeleton spawner and thank God that they are not hostile <laughs> because they could just you know, run out of the spawner while I was making it, but I didn't really mind. And so began the hitting skeleton days. Um, I'm really sorry if the sound isn't aligned. I think it is in most, but it might not be. So once again, I am really sorry. By the way, I have an exciting announcement to make. So in my face reveal video, I'd said that I'd not received the silver play button and I'd not been contacted by YouTube, but guess what? I contacted them myself and the silver play button is on its way, so I'm not sure when it's going to arrive, so hopefully this week. Um, and if it does arrive this week, guess what next week's video will be? 
the unboxing, of course. I popped into the nether and that piglin was really confused. He didn't know if he was angry or not. <laughs> so yeah, that was a bit strange, but I then started killing loads of endermen because the next step of my journey would be the ender dragon. By the way, if there are any animal lovers watching, in two weeks I have a very exciting video for you. Um, I know I'm going to love making it, well at least recording it, maybe the editing is less fun. <laughs> but truly, um, I think you're gonna really, really enjoy it. For the next few days I of course hunted down some gas in the hope of getting a gas tier. The only problem with gas is that when you actually manage to kill them, um, the drop is often very far, so it either drops into the lava or somewhere hard to get. So I went to that somewhere and whew, there was a gas here. I was delighted. Now all I had left to break the curse would be to get the remaining cat breeds. I returned to my castle and brewed the last potion the potion of regeneration and i was extremely happy i decided i would kill two birds with one stone so on my way to the stronghold if ever i found a village i would try to tame a maximum of cats after climbing up to the top of my tallest tower i threw the ender eye and it landed on another tower so yeah i had to get it <laughs> and then i set off on my journey I was delighted to find a desert village on my way. Desert villages are my favorite for cats because grass does not grow in the desert and cats are so much easier to find. Ginger, the first cat, was extremely easy to tame because there was a lag at that moment. <laughs> I named the black and white cat Snowflake and the white one was named Ash. On my way to get more fish, I found two diamonds in a shipwreck which was very exciting. I was feeling a bit nervous thinking about the dragon fight, so I decided to relax by tormenting a few villagers. On day 90, I arrived at the stronghold. I had quite a few cats with me that I couldn't take in case they got hurt, so I sat them all down and hoped that I would be coming back to them. I fearlessly walked through the stronghold, and I mean it because, yeah, no mobs could be hostile with me, so I didn't have to fret. <laughs> oh, and I got stuck in a cobweb. When I found the portal, I put my unnecessary belongings in a chest, and then I put all the ender eyes in the portal and jumped in. If you've been watching my 100 day videos for a while, yeah, I got the typical lag that we all adore. I spawned on a platform above the void so there was no time to lose and I made my way over to the mainland. I drank my slow falling potion and destroyed my first crystal. And here the dragon totally freaked me out when she flew above me. I made my way up one of the tall towers and started destroying the crystals. So by the way, this is a tip I would give to any of you. Always go up uh, the tall tower because the other towers are way easier to destroy after that. So of course you do the small ones from the ground, but the taller ones, it is the best way to go. I then made my way up the towers with the cages and I was careful to put a block in front of me to take less damage during the blast. The dragon flew down so I started hitting her with all my might, but then she kicked me into the air. To kill her off faster, I decided to start shooting arrows at her. And then the final line was close, so I hit her and hit her with all my might. Well, actually, I really did not want her to fly off, so I would just like hit her super quick because I just wanted it to finish. I didn't want her to fly off, you know. I collected the eggs and jumped into the jacuzzi to join my cats. When I came back, it was time to celebrate, so my cats and I went over to a village to torment the villagers. 
that's when I spotted a cat that I did not already have and she was so difficult to get. I tried sneaking but I got her when she fell into a pond. It was very difficult to spot any other cats because of the grass so I started pouring buckets of water on the grass to remove it. Halloween was near. Autumn had taken over the world around me. There were dead leaves on the floor, there were skulls, even the watermelons were carved like pumpkins. It was adorable. This was truly a lovely day. I could feel the spirit of Halloween all around me and I even killed the wandering trader, which was really very relaxing and very, very nice. And then I saw this spooky chicken. He was super cool. But this reminded me I had little time left. If I didn't get all the cat breeds before day 100, I would remain a witch for always and eternity. Drastic changes had to be made. From now on, if I saw a cat that I already had, I had to kill it in the hope of getting a breed I did not have already. This was very hard on me, but after all, I remained a girl in a witch's body. And then, finally, a cat that I did not already have spawned. Now, the only cat I was missing was the British Shorthair. To diffuse the tension, I decided to annoy the village's golem. And that's when I spotted this creeper who was definitely ready for Halloween. Here was the British short hair and I think he knew he was the last cut I needed because he was so difficult to get. I even had to kill some more salmon for him. I had done it and I even got an achievement for it. <laughs> I never got that achievement in my life. I had just welcomed to the family Ragnar the short hair and Tyrion. Gosh, I was a happy witch when I returned to the swamp with my, let's say, flock of cats. <laughs> and my neighbor witch was super excited when she saw them. The entire swamp had been tainted with a beautiful orange color. And by the way, Hagrid and Albus's son actually had gleaming yellow eyes. The sweet tooth I was craved a candy apple, so I got one from a nearby tree. It was the night of Halloween. The creeper's disguise was excellent. <laughs> you could barely see him. Then I saw a skeleton dressed up as Herobrine and I attacked his friend because he wasn't wearing a disguise and then Herobrine was angry with me for some reason. <laughs> and when I saw that bat dressed as Steve, I thought it was hilarious. I love the fact that you could see that zombie's brains and look, the fish were actually dressed up as cats and the squid was a snowman and Steve. But I grew curious and I wanted to know how the nether mobs actually dressed up and that ghast was <laughs> hilarious and not at all as scary as usual. At first I couldn't figure out that pigman from the back but he was actually dressed as a villager which, <laughs> which was pretty funny and then I saw the hoglins so the first two costumes were not that good and then I saw a hoglin dressed as Steve. I mean, this was perfect. <laughs> day 100 was the big day and Tootsie returned to her usual form. She looked back at the castle behind her and thought about all the fun things she had done being a witch. Will she return to her village or stay in her castle till the end of time? I woke up in a darkish sp at the next door neighbor at the next at the next door uh, well I did well I did find something though it wouldn't uh, uh, but I was and this baby the iron but what wouldn't a wish do loads of letter Ooh! rather than death rather than Thankfully, this gas has spawned on my way to the Ender Dragon. Well, more. After climbing up to the top of my. I drank my sloth. To diffuse the. T that I even had to. I had done it. And I.